right. Hello, everyone. Um, today, I want to take two of the questions that we had in our last set of scenarios. And I want to go over both of these in depth to help you understand how to dissect an operative report and how to understand what he's what he or she is saying in the dictation. Um, everyone seemed to have problems with this specific scenario. So I've tried to break it down so that you could understand how, how to think about it. Because these are, you know, these are different terms. These, this is a different world. And we've got to kind of Im immerse ourselves in learning the knowledge behind what the words are saying, or we're not going to get to that objective and be able to code appropriately. When we look at our first scenario, it's talking about a sentinel, a sentinel node. And right off the bat, I need to know what that is. Now, I have actually today, I have written all my discussion notes. And the reason I did that is because this is recorded. You can go back to this and you won't just hear my thoughts and rationale. You can actually see it on the screen. So we're going to talk about, we're going to learn what a sentinel note is. Those are the first nodes, they're the first lip nodes where cancer cells might spread from an already existing tumor. Lymph nodes in our bodies are small organs and they filter fluid in our bodies, helping to protect us from illnesses. And I found that the word sentinel means a guard or someone keeping watch. So that's the purpose of our lymphatic system. We also have over 600 lymph nodes throughout our body, which I found interesting. Now that we know what a sentinel node is, it's referred to as the first lymph nodes where cancer cells might spread from an already existing tumor. Let's see what's going on with our operative report. Okay, this is our 42-year-old female who recently had surgery for melanoma of the right leg. I want to pick up as I'm reading this what my diagnosis is. Melanoma of the right leg. Clark level four. What is that? So that is strictly a physician term describing it's a scale that's set and it describes how deep that melanoma has gone into our skin because remember melanoma is skin cancer okay she had no other signs of metastasis or adenopathy under general anesthesia a sentinel node biopsy of the deep axillary nodes was performed with a gamma counter Probe. Now, the physician is strictly in that sentence just describing what he did, he or she did. Now we're going to talk about the actual procedure. An injection of isosulfan blue dye was performed and the nodes followed carefully to the single bright blue node. Then we have the excision. So this node was excised and sent for a frozen section, which did prove to be negative for melanoma. And then the surgeon addresses before the procedure, a radiologist performed a lymphocentigraphy. And what is that? That's actually imaging of the lymphatic system using small amounts of radioactive materials that the radiologist injects into the skin. Okay, so this radiology, before all that happened, 
had actually injected radioactive materials into the skin. So, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go to dissect our procedure. But the first thing that I'm going to do after I read that is I'm going to take my notepad and I'm going to decide what my diagnosis is. And I know it's melanoma of the right lower leg. That is what we're treating. That's what we're here for because we have melanoma. Now, what procedures were done that the surgeon performed? The surgeon only, because in my job, I'm only coding for the surgeon. I'm not coding for the radiologist. All right, so my procedures, there was two. First, and I've got it backwards here, but injection of the isosulfan blue dye was injected to identify the node. And then biopsy, and he identifies this deep axillary lymph node. And you're gonna need all that information to be able to go in to find a code to get the correct code. I still need to think through a little bit more before I go to and think about finding my code. So I'm going to make a note just in my mind or on my piece of paper that the radiologist injected the radioactive isotopes. That is what the lymphoscintigraphy is. But in the operating room, I want to think about what the surgeon did. He performed an injection of that isosulfan blue dye. And then I, I got to know what that is so I can understand how to address my procedure and find the code. So it's a blue dye and it works by staining the lymph nodes and the lymph vessels. Okay, so when this is injected, it allows the probe to identify the exact location of the sentinel node. Notice in the documentation, I made a note here that the surgeon states an injection was performed. He actually performed that injection, not the radiologist, okay? And this is referred to as mapping. And that's a medical term that you just need to learn and know and make note today. But. I'm going to scroll down right here before we go into our code. And I'm going to show you up here in our um, documentation, a gamma counter probe was mentioned. I want to show you what's going on with that. All right, so the radiologist has injected the radioactive isotopes into the skin of the patient. In the procedure, the surgeon injects the isosulfan blue dye. That dye will find that radioactive material, which is locating the sentinel node that needs to be dissected. The radiation is detected through this probe right here. So we've already got the radioactive material, radioactive beads or dye, whatever the tracer is that the radiologist use. We've got that injected into the patient. We then have the dye in the patient. Now we got to find the lymph node. We've got to find that specific lymph node. He's going to, he, he knows the area because the radiologist has confirmed the area on the body in the axilla that is, uh, that we're looking at the possible melanoma. So we've confirmed that through x-ray. So we know where we're at on the body. We're gonna take this probe and we're gonna actually move it around the area until this gamma counter probe starts beeping, until it reaches whatever set number, and that's when we know where to make the incision. 
So that radioactive material that the radiologists use, the isosulfan dye that the surgeon used have found the sentinel lymph node. Now the best, the best way to see this is a YouTube video because there are several out there. And I, you, this procedure is common. This is not something that you will not see ever again because you will. So it helps us to understand the terms that we need to look for in our coding. All right, so I'm going to move this over here because I want to look at find a code now. And I want to code my diagnosis. Okay. And I actually broken down in my notes how to find the diagnosis and how to find the procedure because I know that um, find the code might give us some some struggle as we're learning it so this will help I hope so when we log in to find the code we go to diagnosis we go to ICD 10 CM which is where I'm at all right now I'm going to go to the index and I'm going to make sure right here that I'm in my ICD-10 CM index because it usually pops up what I've looked for last. So you want to make sure you change that. All right, in here, my diagnosis, if I go back and look, and I've got my procedure note pulled up as well, or I've got my notes, whichever it works for you, but I've got a melanoma of the right lower leg, and I need to assign that code. So I'm going to key in my term as melanoma. And I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to scroll down because I know it's of the skin of the leg. I already know that because my, doc my documentation told me that. So I'm going to open this plus sign and I'm going to scroll down. And I'm on and I, I find leg in my subterms. And I find C43.7. Well, I know not to stop there. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to see what's available. And this was the right lower leg. So I have melanoma, malignant melanoma of right lower limb. And I'm going to open this code because I know not to stop here. And I'm going to do away with that pop-up ad. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to look at my code. And I want to make sure that it is what I need it to be. Malignant melanoma of right lower limb. This is my leg. I am exactly where I need to be. The physician, the surgeon does not document that it's in situ. So I'm comfortable that I have the correct code. But I'm going to read this anyway, remember? You are always going to read this common language description because this helps you to understand what diagnosis, what the diagnosis definition is. All right, so I have C43.71 as my diagnosis. Now I want to go figure out how to code my procedure. So I know I'm in CPT, so I'm going to go ahead and go there. All right, when, I'm, when you're coding for a sentinel note, I'm sorry, let me do, the first thing I'm going to do is go to my index. I'm just getting ahead of myself. Go to my index. Got to change this. And then I have to decide what I'm going to put in here. All right, so I have two codes, 38792 and 38900. Well, I don't know. So I've got to pull up both. So I'm going to pull up 38792. All right, so this is an injection procedure. 
a radioactive tracer for identification of sentinel node. All right. I didn't have a radioactive tracer. I had dye inserted. So for intraoperative identification, and mapping is that medical term you need to make a note of because it's it's a, that's a learning term. That's something that you're gonna have to know when you're doing these. Identifying the sentinel lymph, lymph node, including injection of non-radioactive dye, C38900. But I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna scroll down here and I'm gonna read this, okay? Because I need to know what this is as well. And then I'm gonna go over to the second code that was listed in my re report. What I have to know here is that the isosulfan blue dye is a non-radioactive dye. Or either, if I don't know that, I would have went with the other code, the 38792 right here, for injection of radioactive tracer. So I have to know what the isosulfan dye is. And then again, I'm going to read my common language description. But my 38900 is defined as intraoperative identification, such as mapping, which I've used that term, of sentinel lymph node or nodes, includes injection, of non-radioactive dye when performed. And it tells us that we have to list this separately in addition to the code for the main procedure. Because the main procedure here is our biopsy. It's taken that node out. But we have to also identify the injection because the physician performed an injection of that dye. We've got to give him credit. We had two procedures performed, the injection and the biopsy. Okay. All right, so now I want to move over to biopsy. So I'm going to go back to my index. Make sure I have CPT. And I'm going to pull, type in the word biopsy. And I can scroll down either way, uh, but I've got a biopsy of the lymph node. And I've got such a range. But let's scroll on down. to see if we find anything within the, and we, and we don't, but I want you to look. Well, okay. All right, so we're gonna come back up here Lots of scrolling going on. Let's stop that. And we're going to see that we have a code range 38500 through 38531. And we're just going to have to start until we learn. And I promise you do get familiar with this so that you don't have to go through each code. Well, this is a biopsy of a lymph node open superficial. This is not what we had done. So I'm gonna scroll through. I'm gonna use my arrow. 
And this is a biopsy of a lymph node by needle, superficial. This is biopsy of a lymph node, open, deep cervical, still not where I need to be. This is a deep cervical with excision of the scalene fat pad. That was not in my documentation. Biopsy of lymph node open. Well, I know it's open because he did an incision. That incision is my key word. There was no scope involved, so it's either open or closed. So open and deep axillary node. That is exactly what the physician described in my documentation. Pulling back up, it says biopsy of deep axillary lymph node, 38525. And once again, I wanna learn more about what this entails, what this biopsy is. So I have two codes. Bring it back over. I have the 38900. That's my mapping of my sentinel node. And remember to go, when you have a sentinel node mapping, you want to look up sentinel node. So you wanna make a note of that. And then our biopsy, we found that we had to scroll through to get to the right site. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop here before I go to the next one. Is there any questions? We found. Yes, uh, I, yes, I have uh, a question. Okay. All right. So back to the report, back to the operative report. There was a statement that uh, it was negative to melanoma. What exactly yes. was negative to melanoma? And now we are now the, calling the lip melanoma. Now. The lymph node, when they dissected this lymph node from the patient's body, it was sent for frozen section, which is a process where they take the specimen and they take it to the lab and it's ran through a frozen section, which is a quick turnaround result to tell the physician if it's negative or or not for cancer or melanoma specifically in this case. So the physician knew that there is no malignancy metastasis in this site. So there was no further op uh, operation procedure needed because it was negative. So it was our lymph node that was negative for melanoma. So that, but looking at this patient's record, the patient had a melanoma before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. That and we're still treating that. Okay. We're still okay. currently treating that melanoma. And what we're looking for to see if this lymph node, if there is a positive lymph node for metastasis. I saw that um in your answers a lot. Um, well, everyone chose the code with the um radiologist code for the procedure that was performed here, this lymphocentigraphy. The radiologist performed that, and you're gonna see that in procedures when it identifies, when your procedure identifies radiologist performed, that's not gonna be in your surgeon's coding. That radiologist will bill that separately. We can't bill it, and that's what these codes do. They allow the billers in the office to bill the insurance companies. So we can't bill for something that our surgeon didn't do. It, 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 the same applies to uh, anesthesiologists, am I right? Okay, okay. You have just mentioned that we cannot bill what the radio radiologist did for a surgeon. Yes. But does that right. uh, does the same thing applies to what a anesthesiologist did? Yes, yes, yes. When I'm put to sleep for my surgery, 
that surgeon can only bill for what he does. That an that anesthesiologist is going to bill for what he does. Two different positions. And if you're hired for Dr. Jones, you are coding only for Dr. Jones. Everything is clear now. It means that if um, the node was positive, we would have um, coded for melanoma of the um, of that too, right? Yes, you would have coded for melanoma of the axillary lymph nodes. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. Thank you. That's so a great question. Yes, go ahead. It means that um, if you are coding for a physician, you have to read through and code for only the procedures he or she did. And that is correct. And not, yes, yes, so it's very clear now. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. This scenario is, I am so glad that I found it um, when I went in to find a code because you're going, you need to know what I found that find a code does not have in their index. And as a matter of fact, last night I sent a ticket to find the code. Um, so make notes here until find a code comes back with a response with how to locate intermediate repair. Because this one was also a trouble a trouble scenario in those last ones that I sent out, but I believe I know why. So we, we wanna learn from this right now. And this is something that um, if I send any other exercises that has this intermediate repair or if anything in the virtual internship has this, you want to make a note of how to find the intermediate repair. So let's see what our scenario is. It was simple. Uh, what's the CPT code for simple repair of a 3.0 centimeter laceration on the cheek with extensive removal of gravel and debris? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to find a code. Let me make sure I got both screens so I can, cause I won't remember. All right, so I'm gonna go back to CPT. And I'm going to go to the index. And what I'm going to key in is repair. Because I know I have a, a wound, a skin wound repair. I'm going to scroll down to skin. And I'm going to open it up. And then I have wound because I have a laceration. So we know from terminology that we have a wound. And I'm gonna open this up right here. Here is what I found that does not match our CPT code books in paper form. In the code book, there is a intermediate that's right between complex and simple. I did not write the codes down, but I'm going to give it to you. I wish I had done that. Give me just a minute. Um, intermediate, write these codes down because this will be your category. One, two, zero, three, one through one, two, zero, five, seven. Now, because this was being recorded, um, I am going to write down this in our book. And I'm sorry that I'm taking time, but this is going to be on the screen for others. And I think it's important that they see it. And to understand. Okay, so I don't have that here in my in my index. But if I know that I've got repair skin wound intermediate and it starts with 12031, did I read that correctly? Yes. 
then I am going to actually go back into my procedure codes and I'm going to go ahead and pull up 12031. Repair intermediate wounds of scalp. All right, so so I don't that's not where I'm at, is it? So I've got to find the cheek or or the face or let's see as we scroll through what this category has, what the, this section of intermediate has. One, two, zero, three, two. I'm still in the scalp and the axle and the trunk. This uh, this is a cheek that I saw the physician repaired. I'm still in the same body area location. I'm still there. And I'm just arrowing through because I'm going to find myself out. And you can probably pull this up in a search, but we I'm doing just the basic find the code because I want you to see the different tools as well. Okay. I'm still not on the face or that area. I am now, I'm in repair, intermediate, wounds of face, but I'm at 2.5 centimeters. I'm here now, repair, intermediate, wounds of face. I'm at 2.6 and my wound was 3.0. So, If I back up and I tell you why this is intermediate, I think that will also help some clarification here. If you go back and you look at the CPT guidelines at the very front of the wound repairs, you see the definitions with, sim with simple and intermediate. And that's something that you need to be very familiar with is those guidelines. Because when you get this type diagnosis, the physician documented simple repair, you go to simple. But because they did extensive removal of gravel and debris, that is intermediate repair. And so I'm, I'm gonna back up to the guidelines, but I want us to look at the common language description here. Okay, this, the wound is cleansed and inspected, but um, I wish I could have highlighted this last night. Extensive, okay. Extensive cleaning and a removal of matter in a heavily contaminated superficial wound. Superficial, this is a simple wound, but it required extensive cleaning. So I can justify the intermediate by the definition of repair of an intermediate wound. I am beyond simple. I'd like to go back to the guidelines at the very first. Um, if I can find them this way. No, let's just go here. If I go to section guidelines, I'm going to go to surgery.
What I want to find is my integumentary. You all can see that I still um, fumble around sometimes trying to find um, the guidelines for this. What I'm looking for is the guidelines for integumentary. I don't want to download that PDF. All right, I am not finding them. Let's just see if I can go back to the chapter section. Here we go. Sorry that took so long. Took, it took me going around my elbow to get to my thumb, didn't it? Um, what I want you to do is to go back, especially before your final exam, those that are taking the final exam Friday, and I want you to review the guidelines for procedures on the integumentary system. And I want you to review simple, intermediate, and complex. But I want to show you right here that intermediate includes repair of wounds that in addition to the above, meaning in addition to the simple repair, require layer closure, which we didn't have any of that, okay? But if we skip down to the last line, we see that a single layer closure which is what this is, a simple closure of heavily contaminated wounds that have required ext extensive cleaning or removal of particulate matter also constitutes intermediate repair. So that is, needs you need to make a note of that. Um, if you're keeping this in a notebook, there again, you know, I don't know if I've suggested this before, but a notebook of your different sections would be very helpful because when you start a notebook and you're talking integumentary, if you're talking digestive, it's going to all run together. So if you can keep the skin and then the digestive, which would be your cholecystectomies, your EGD, so forth and so on. If you can keep that separated, that will help you. Uh, and, and honestly, I do that. I do that even now when, when new codes come out or, or new information comes out, I try to break it down so that I can remember it until it, until it sinks in. Okay, sorry that took so long. I was trying to find a simple way and did not. All right, so if we come back over here, are there any questions on why this was coded to intermediate rather than simple? That's what, that is the takeaway here. And the other takeaway is this category is not in find a code in that index. So I would like for you to make a note so you know where to look. Hey. Yes, Leon. Just to clarify for the students, though, on the certification exam, there won't be anything like this that is not in find a code. Whatever they have on the exam will be 
will be accessible within Find the Code, right? Yes, you are correct because I am actually, I have a note today before the end of day because I will be traveling in the morning. I am going through each of the final exam scenarios to make sure that this is not a problem.